In this video, we'll look at 15 beloved celebs who died in 2022. Anne Hesch On August 5, 2022, Anne Hesch got behind the wheel of her mini Clubman. She drove around a Los Angeles neighborhood and happened to hit a garage, but only did a little bit of damage. Rather than wait for the cops, she fled the scene and hit a Jaguar automobile being driven by a fella before speeding up and driving into a house at 80 miles per hour. The impact of the collision resulted in her mini Clubman breaking through several walls and ending up 30 feet inside the house. With Anne Hesch fully conscious but unable to escape the vehicle, a fire then began and swiftly spread, engulfing both the house and the car. It took 65 minutes for the fire to be extinguished by 59 firefighters, and Anne could not be reached for 45 of those 65 minutes. When she was finally extricated, she was found to have been seriously burned and suffering from smoke inhalation, with the fire destroying the house and everything in it, and almost killing the sole inhabitant and her pets. Once taken to the hospital, tests were run to determine what had driven Anne to do what she did, but she was eventually found to be not under the influence of drugs or alcohol. While in the hospital, Anne fell into a coma before being later declared brain dead. Per her wishes, her organs were donated and she was taken off life support on August 14, 2022, with her remains cremated and interred in a mausoleum. Her death has been officially ruled to be an accident. Be sure to stick to the end to see the real reason why Queen Elizabeth died. If you thought that Anne Hesch story was somber, wait till you hear this next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more videos. Kirstie Alley This American actress had a couple of Emmys and a Golden Globe to her name. She was most known for being in the NBC sitcom Cheers, Veronica's Closet, and the Look Who's Talking trilogy. Her movie debut was in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and in this movie she played the minor role of a Vulcan Starfleet officer. As for her latest work, that's on The Masked Singer, though she was kicked out on the eighth episode of the seventh season. Kirstie Alley died on December 5th this year with colon cancer cutting short her life and career. Reports have it that there was a very brief period between the cancer diagnosis and the death of this Emmy winner, with treatment at Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida ultimately being unsuccessful. Ray Liotta Something Wild, 1986, Field of Dreams, 1989, Goodfellas, 1990, and Texas Rising, 2015, are among Ray Liotta's most known works. But he has always been inextricably associated with the sublime, seminal, and sensational masterpiece that was Goodfellas. This guy has been in music videos by David Guetta and Ed Sheeran, and has voiced several video game characters. As recounted by Leota himself, he got mouthy with his high school basketball coach and was kicked off the team. He then turned to acting to keep busy, being subsequently in a Sunday in New York stage production. Once at a high school, he studied acting at the University of Miami, graduated in 1978, got a recurring role on Another World from NBC, and since then has had little difficulty getting into all kinds of movies. Now, hard as it is to believe, Ray Liotta is no more. In May 2022, he went to the Dominican Republic for the filming of Dangerous Waters. On May 26, he was found dead after having expired in his sleep. He was 67 years old, engaged to be married, and survived by a daughter. Aaron Carter On November 5, 2022, at around 11 a.m., Aaron Carter's housekeeper found him lying unresponsive in the bathtub. She screamed her head off before calling the cops and emergency personnel, who arrived to find quite a few compressed air canisters at the scene, plus prescription pills and a very dead Aaron Carter. Such canisters containing canned air he inhaled to induce euphoria, hallucination, and delusions, with seizures and sudden death being side effects. Nearly two months later, the cause of Aaron Carter's demise has yet to be determined, but many have pointed out that the late music artist had an extensive drug abuse history and could have overdosed either accidentally or on purpose. In the days leading up to his death, he was photographed looking weak and gaunt, and many have since interpreted that as a cry for help that was not heeded. 
His remains have since been cremated, and plans are in place to scatter them in an undisclosed part of the Florida Keys, along with those belonging to his sister Leslie, who had died at age 25 from a prescription drug overdose. Some of Carter's ashes will be set aside so that when his mom dies and is cremated, both their ashes can be scattered in the same place at the same time. Brad William Henke Henke was a former NFL player who was too plagued with injuries to make much of an impact on the fortunes of the teams he was signed to. He eventually quit that life heading to the entertainment sector, focusing on starring in commercials at first before getting TV and movie roles of increasing depth and range. His Desi Piscatella character in Orange is the New Black made the show extra memorable in seasons four and five, and OITNB is the show for which he is best known. But he has also been in ER, The Office, Hawaii Five-0, Criminal Minds, Gone in 60 Seconds, and Fury. Brad Henke had some significant health challenges. In May 2021, he made a social media post stating that 90% of his artery was blocked, with a couple of stents being used to fix the issue the next month. He was also suffering from a tumor. Brad Henke went the way of all mortals on November 29, 2022, passing peacefully in his sleep at age 56, and a cause of death has not been stated. Paul Sorvino Paul Sorvino is another Goodfellas actor who passed away this year. He was 83. Born and raised in Brooklyn, he grew up wanting to be an opera singer and took voice lessons. Paul first worked as a copywriter in an ad agency, getting an ulcer for his troubles, before dumping that for the more exciting world of theater and the movies. Goodfellas, 1990, would always be the movie that most readily springs to mind anytime his name is mentioned or his picture is displayed. He had a knack for playing authority figures, who might be breaking the law with all their might or upholding it with all their strength. No specific cause of death was mentioned as being responsible for his demise, but it's known that as he aged, Paul increasingly became afflicted with a range of ailments. Incidentally, he is the father of Michael Sorvino and Mira Sorvino, with the daughter being an Oscar and a Golden Globe winner. Takeoff Kirsnik Kari Ball, also known as Kirsnik Kari Ball or Takeoff, and an indispensable part of the Migos trinity that was shot and killed in Houston, Texas on November 1, 2022. He was 28. He and a large group of people had just attended a private party where there were several big shots in the entertainment and crime industry, and the group gathered at a bowling alley to shoot dice and talk smack. Then around 2 a.m., someone said something that another person did not like with that resulting in guns being pulled and shots being fired. Takeoff, for some reason, was not hugging the ground during all this, and while he was never a target, he still got three bullets to the body. He was pronounced dead at the scene by the cops and paramedics. Two other individuals were also taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Takeoff's cause of death has been ruled to be penetrating gunshot wounds. His death has also been ruled a homicide, and investigations continue, with no one being yet arrested and charged for the killing. Fred Ward Freddie Joe Ward was an actor and producer who was best known for movies like Southern Comfort, The Right Stuff, and the duo of Tremors movies. Fred had a rough childhood and was raised primarily by his grandma. He went into the Air Force when he was old enough to buy himself a beer and spent three years wearing dress uniforms. After that, Fred earned a living as a lumberjack, short order cook, boxer, and janitor. His acting career began in Rome, and in 1979, he starred in his first big role opposite Clint Eastwood, with the movie being the very iconic Escape from Alcatraz. He was last seen on the big screen in a 2015 episode of HBO's True Detective and has been praised for his versatility and wide dramatic range. During the last few years of his life, he had taken to painting, considering it to be his second most loved art form. Freddie Ward died in Los Angeles at the age of 79. Per his family's request, no cause of death has been issued, and all we can do is speculate. Coolio Artist Leon Ivey Jr. was an American rapper who took the stage name Coolio. He fought drug addiction and a difficult childhood situation and constant health scares due to asthma, but became one of the best-selling rappers ever. He was best known for the Gangsta's Paradise album and a single that earned him a Grammy, 
a couple of MTV Video Music Awards and a Billboard Music Award, and headed the charts in multiple countries at the time of the release. Gangsta's Paradise flew off the shelves at such a pace it became the biggest selling single of 1995, and it topped the Billboard Hot 100 for three weeks. Coolio had eight studio albums to his name, but none has so far eclipsed the reach and influence of Gangsta's Paradise. Its official music video has 1.1 billion YouTube views right now. Music apart, Coolio had been in a host of movies and TV shows, from Batman and Robin, Judgment Day, and Three Days to Vegas, to fintech rap battle Monzo vs. Starling. On September 28, 2022, the 59-year-old was found unresponsive on the bathroom floor of a Californian mansion belonging to an old friend and manager, Jerez Posey. Once paramedics arrived at the scene, they performed CPR for 45 minutes before pronouncing him dead. The suspected cause of death is cardiac arrest, and he has since been cremated, with most of his ashes going into an urn and the rest being encased in wearable jewelry. Gilbert Gottfried Gilbert Jeremy Gottfried was an American comedian and actor who was known for having a voice so shrill it could thaw frozen peas. Cold river. He was born in Brooklyn and embarked on an acting career after receiving encouragement from his sisters who had seen him in a play and thought he had enough talents to make a living on the stage. Gilbert first worked as a comedian and in 1980 was hired as a cast member of the season six episode of Saturday Night Live. It was during this episode that he debuted the screeching voice that would later on come to define and identify him. In 1987, he was cast in Beverly Hills Cops 2, and in 1990 and 1991, starred in the first two Problem Child movies, plus a series of animated Aladdin movies. It would require a separate video to list all of his movie credits, but suffice it to say that Gilbert was regarded as one of the most original and filthy-mouthed comedians to ever draw a breath in the modern era. Gilbert Godfrey suffered from a heart condition known as ventricular tachycardia, plus a genetic condition that causes intellectual disability, muscle loss, heart complications, and weakness. He died on April 12, 2022, at the age of 67, as a direct result of what had long ailed him, and he is survived by a wife, a son, and a daughter. Tracy Braxton Tracy Braxton was the younger sister of Tony Braxton, and much like Tony, was known as a singer and radio TV personality. Her career began in 1989 when she and her four sisters formed a girl group and released a single that rose to number 79 on the Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Singles chart and was anything but a hit. In 1991, LaFace Records signed Tony Braxton as its first female solo artist, with Tracy and the rest of her sisters becoming her backup singers and retaining that role for much of their life. Crash and Burn, Tracy's debut album, came out in October 2014, with sales of 4,000 copies in the first week of release, and it eventually zoomed to number 11 on the Billboard R&B Albums chart. She also released a second album in August 2018 and has been in a trio of movies. She was also in a couple of TV shows with Braxton Family Values, showcasing her interaction with her siblings and their families, and being the show she was most often associated with and remembered for. In 2021, Tracy Braxton was diagnosed with and began treatment for esophageal cancer. Her cancer treatment was ultimately unsuccessful, and she died on March 12, 2022, at the age of 50. Meatloaf Michael Lee Ade was a singer and actor who was known for holding very entertaining live performances and having an uncommon voice. The Grammy winner was professionally known as Meatloaf, and he was one of the best-selling musicians ever, with his Bad Outta Hell trilogy album having sold over 100 million copies. The first album in the trilogy was on the best-selling charts for almost a decade and still regularly shifts 200,000 copies annually. Meatloaf had 12 studio albums to his credit and was in almost 100 movies and TV shows. In 2003, he was diagnosed with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, which caused symptoms like abnormally rapid heartbeats, lightheadedness, and shortness of breath. That diagnosis, plus his weight and asthma, meant he was not always in the best of health. He was on record saying that he had gone through a quartet of back surgeries. 
Meatloaf spent some of 2021 fighting COVID restrictions and precautions and said those who insisted on everyone wearing masks were Nazis and power mad. According to him, he was more than happy to hug fans and friends amid COVID restrictions, and masks were a nuisance that made it impossible to breathe. Meatloaf fell ill with COVID in early January 2022. His condition rapidly worsened and he died on January 20, 2022. Gregory Itzen Gregory Itzen, along with Kiefer Sutherland, Carlos Bernard, Marilyn Rotskub, Kim Raver, and Alicia Cuthbert, all contributed to making 24 a truly seminal and award-winning work of art. In that series from Fox, Itzen played the role of Vice President Charles Logan, later becoming the president when the previous occupant of the Oval Office was severely injured in a terrorist attack. As president, Logan presided over a corrupt administration, was weak-willed, indecisive, deceitful, and vengeful, and participated in a conspiracy meant to secure U.S. oil interests. Itzen's performance in 24 won him a couple of Emmy nominations in 2006 and 2010. Apart from 24, Gregory Itzen starred in an impressive slew of movies, from The Kentucky Cycle, Teen Wolf, and The Fabulous Baker Boys, to Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and has had recurring roles on shows like Friends, Covert Affairs, The Mentalist, NCIS, and the Star Trek franchise. He also had an abiding love for the stage, was a card-carrying member of the Los Angeles-based Matrix Theater Company, and had been in tons of productions and earned many accolades and award nominations for his on-stage performances. Gregory Itzen had a health scare in 2015, with a big heart attack nearly taking him out while he was playing a Shakespearean role before a live audience. He left this world on July 8, 2022, with complications from emergency surgery to be blamed for his demise. David Warner David Warner graced the likes of Omen, Tron, and Titanic with his imposing presence. He was most known for playing a gun-toting butler come villain in Titanic and was frequently given to acting villain roles. He won an Emmy in 1981 for his interpretation of Pomponius Falco in Masada and got an Emmy nomination for playing Reinhard Heydrich in the moving, disturbing, and frightening 1978 miniseries Holocaust. Movies apart, he was a well-respected force in the world of theater, though he did suffer from stage fright that affected the frequency and duration of his on-stage appearances. David had what he described as a messy childhood that forced him to take to drama so he could soar far above the unpleasantness of everyday realities. And soar he did, with a glittering career stretching from the 70s to now. His most recent appearances were in Mary Poppins Returns, 2018, You, Me, and Him, 2017, and Penny Dreadful, 2014. A couple of years ago, he was given a cancer diagnosis and passed away in July 2022 at a London care home for those with an artistic lean. He was 80. Queen Elizabeth II This is the biggest celeb death of 2022 and perhaps this century. Queen Elizabeth II. The queen is dead, but long live the queen. She had the constitution of a horse and was active and in good health for nearly all of her life. However, her constitution took an irrevocable hit once Prince Philip, her husband of many years, was no more. She began using walking sticks in public, and it didn't help that she caught COVID early this year. By September, doctors were advising her to take it easy and have a bit of a rest. She left this world on September 8, 2022, at the ripe old age of 96, with two of her children at her side, and had set a record by ruling for 70 years. She allegedly suffered through cancer during her final years, according to claims made in a new book about the royal family, while many believe that she died of blood poisoning. What followed was an outpouring of grief like no other, with the late monarch lauded for her unifying personality and strength of character. Her state funeral was very grand, and a multi-day ceremony was attended by almost every president and prime minister on the planet, viewed by billions on the telly, and witnessed in person by millions in the UK, who filed past her coffin and lined the streets as her funeral cortege passed by. She was buried beside her dear husband in the King George VI Memorial Chapel, and her passing marked the end of an era that we will never see again.
click here to see 20 celebs you didn't know are dead. See you there.